Do you want to become a pilot but don't know where to start? Well, today's your lucky day. Stick around and I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. What's up guys and welcome back to the Prop Zone. My name is Scott Schumacher and in today's video I am going to explain to you guys what it takes to become a pilot. For those of you that don't know me, I am a commercial rated pilot with an instrument rating currently working on my flight instructor certification. If you are new here, please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. All right guys, let's get into it. All right, so the first question that you have on your mind is probably where do I start? You wanna become a pilot but you don't know where to begin. Well, let me go ahead and tell you. Okay, the first thing that you need to understand is that this process is gonna take a lot of time, money, and commitment. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is sign up for what's called a discovery flight. You can pretty much sign up for a discovery flight at any flight school at an airport location near you. You can go on Google and type it in, discovery flight, or you can go in and type in local flight schools, they'll pop up. They'll have their phone number, give them a call, let them know that you're interested in flight training and you wanna book a discovery flight. A discovery flight is gonna run you anywhere between about $100 and $350, depending on your location and aircraft being used. And a discovery flight is simply, as it sounds, a flight where you're gonna go up and discover if it's something that you're interested in or if it's something that you may have thought you were interested in, but now that you've gone up and experienced it, it's probably not for you. So this is gonna be the first step to finding out if you should continue your flight training. Okay, great, now we got our discovery flight done. We found out this is something that we wanna do. It was amazing, it was great. The flight instructor lets you have the controls. You got to do a couple turns, climbs, descents. You got to see the earth from way up high. Everything looks great. And now you're, de now you're deciding this is the path you wanna take, but you wanna know what's the next step. All right. So the next step that you're going to have to take is, of course, doing what's necessary to become a student pilot. And there's a couple things that we have to do. The first thing that we're going to have to do is go on the FAA website, which is IACRA. IACRA stands for Integrated Airman Certification and Rating Application. And it sounds like a long, fancy term, but it's just the website where you're going to go and submit your application to become a student pilot. That's the first thing that you're going to have to do. And then you're gonna get one of these guys. It's gonna be, it's gonna look just like a real pilot license, but it's gonna say student pilot on it. Okay, once you have the student pilot application submitted, the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go out and get a medical certificate from an AME or aviation medical examiner. The easiest way to do this is to go ahead and go online, search for the closest AME near you, sign up for an appointment and go and get either a first, second or third class medical. Now, which one do I need, Scott? Well, I recommend that you go ahead and try and get a first class medical because what this means is if you ever wanna apply or if you ever wanna fly for the airlines someday, you're gonna need a first class medical to actually exercise airline pilot privileges. Now, do you necessarily need a first class medical for flight training or for something like a private pilot license? No, you really only need a third class medical and that's the easiest one to get. The first class medical, there's a lot more stuff that you have to do to achieve it, but if you can do that, that just means that you're better off. So I highly recommend that you go out and get a first class medical, but you don't have to. You can get a third class for your flight training if that's what you wanna do. Okay, now that we have our student pilot license and our medical, let's go ahead and talk about the different type of pilot certificates. The three main types of pilot certificates are the private pilot license, the commercial pilot license, and the airline transport pilot license. Now, there are two other licenses that you can acquire prior to receiving your private, which is your sport pilot license and your recreational pilot license, but I recommend that you go ahead and skip these two and go ahead and get your private pilot license because with the sport and recreational pilot license, you are going to be limited and restricted to the things that you're able to do. Those limitations and restrictions are generally lifted when you acquire a private pilot license. Okay, so let's talk about the private pilot license and the things that we need to do and what we need to have in order to get one. 
So in order to exercise the privileges of a private pilot license, we're going to need to have a minimum of a third class medical. Remember those medicals I was talking to you about earlier. So if you went and got a third class medical, then that's great. Once you get your private pilot certificate, this is what you're going to need to exercise those privileges. You're going to need to be at least 17 years of age. You're going to need to be able to read, speak, write, and understand the English language. You're going to need to hold a student pilot certificate. You're also going to need to acquire a minimum of 40 hours of flight time, which consists of dual time with your instructor, cross country, and solo time. Once you have those requirements met, you're gonna need to pass a knowledge exam or what's called an FAA written exam. Generally, it's gonna be a 60 question multiple choice test that you're gonna need to pass prior to taking your check ride. And your check ride is gonna be your practical exam. It consists of an oral exam and then of course your flight exam. After completing all the requirements and passing all the tests, you are going to be granted a private pilot license. Now, what can we do with a private pilot license? Well, there's a lot of things you can do and there's a few limitations. With a private pilot license, we can fly in the daytime and in the nighttime in VFR or visual flight rules. And there's certain stipulations that determine the visibility and cloud clearance requirements that you're allowed to fly in VFR. And really the only other limitation that you have as a private pilot is that you cannot receive compensation and you cannot fly for hire. That's gonna come with the commercial pilot certificate, which we'll talk about later. So who would benefit from a private pilot license? Well, if you're the type of person that just wants to fly occasionally on the weekends, you wanna fly your friends around, you, don't, you only wanna fly in good weather, you just wanna go out and get a $100 hamburger, and you're not really wanting to do this to get paid, you don't wanna do this as a profession, most people will stop at their private pilot license and just be able to enjoy the fact that they can go out and fly their friends around. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is acquiring an instrument rating. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what it takes to get an instrument rating, but understand that there's gonna be more flight time that needs to be acquired with an instructor. You're gonna to need to receive more dual time with that instructor. You're gonna to need to take another written exam, your instrument written exam, which in this case I believe is also 60 questions, multiple choice. And then once you're done with that written exam, you're gonna do you're gonna take your instrument check ride, which consists once again of an oral portion and then a practical portion of the test. Once you have completed the flight time requirements, the written and the practical test, you will then receive your instrument rating on your private pilot license. With an instrument rating, we can now fly in more inclement weather. We can fly through the clouds. We can file an IFR flight plan. There's a lot less restrictions once we have an instrument rating, which means there's a lot more flying that can be done. All right, great. So we talked about who would benefit from a private pilot license, and we also talked about how an instrument rating would benefit somebody that had one. Now let's go ahead and talk about the commercial pilot license and what it takes to get one and what the restrictions are. In order to apply for a commercial pilot certificate, you're gonna need a minimum of a third class medical. In order to exercise the privileges of a commercial pilot, you're gonna need a minimum of a second class medical. You are also gonna to need to be 18 years of age and acquire a minimum of 190 to 250 hours of flight time. And the reason that there's a span there is that's gonna be the difference whether or not you did your training part 141 or part 61. And I will talk about the difference between those two in a later video. You are also gonna need to hold a private pilot license, but that's okay because we've already completed that step. Then, just like the private pilot, you're gonna need to complete a written exam, which in this case, the commercial written, is 100 questions that are multiple choice. And then once that's complete with all the other requirements met, you can then go ahead and take your check ride, which consists of an oral and a practical exam. And assuming you pass both of those, you are going to be presented with your commercial pilot certificate. Now, what are the privileges and limitations of a commercial pilot certificate? Well, with a commercial certificate, you can now carry passengers or property for compensation or hire. Now, take that with a grain of salt because there's a lot of limitations that are set on a commercial pilot and what you are actually allowed and not allowed to get paid for 
but we will talk about that also in a later video. One of the limitations to a commercial pilot certificate is that if you don't have an instrument rating, if you get your private pilot license and go straight to commercial without getting your instrument rating, you are limited to exercising those privileges of compensation or higher in excess of 250 nautical miles and you cannot exercise those privileges at night. What that means is if you don't have your instrument rating, you cannot fly for compensation or higher more than 250 nautical miles and you cannot fly for compensation or higher at night. Now, what type of person would a commercial pilot certificate benefit? Like we mentioned earlier, a commercial pilot certificate is pretty much a private pilot certificate, but now we're allowed to get paid to do so. Are we allowed to fly for the airlines now with a commercial pilot certificate? Unfortunately not. There is a few things that we can do with a commercial pilot certificate in the form of getting paid for pilot services and working for a commercial operator, but unfortunately we are not yet allowed to fly for the airlines and this is a general misconception. Okay, after we receive our commercial pilot certificate, most people are gonna have to take another step in getting what's called a multi-engine rating and it sounds as simple as it is. It's getting a rating that allows you to fly airplanes with more than one engine. We're not gonna get into all the details of what is required for a multi-engine rating, but just know that you're gonna need to receive more flight time now in an airplane with more than one engine, so you're gonna need to receive that flight training in a multi-engine aircraft, and then you're gonna have to take your multi-engine check ride and then once you pass that, just like your instrument rating, you're gonna receive your multi-engine rating onto your commercial certificate. And technically, if you have a commercial that's called a multi-engine commercial add-on, so what that means is when you first did your commercial certificate, you did it most likely in a single engine airplane. So you had what's called a commercial single engine. And now that you got your multi-engine rating with your commercial add-on, you now have a commercial rating for a multi-engine aircraft. And we're gonna need to do this if we want to take the next step in moving toward the airlines. Okay, so now we have our commercial certificate with our instrument and multi-engine rating. What is the next step? Well, the next step is acquiring what's called an airline transport pilot certificate. And the airline transport pilot certificate is what you are gonna need if you decide that you wanna fly for the airlines. You're gonna need to be at least 23 years of age, you're gonna need to acquire a minimum of 1,500 hours of flight time, or if you qualify for a restricted ATP or RATP, you can get that certification with only 1,000 hours or 1,250 hours, but we're gonna talk more about the restricted ATP in a later video. In a nutshell, in order to qualify for a restricted ATP, you're gonna to need to attend either a two-year or a four-year university that has a 141 flight program, kind of how I did mine, and then you'll qualify for a restricted ATP so you don't have to get 1,500 hours. You can actually get that ATP certificate in less amount of time. You're gonna to need to also already have a commercial and instrument rating, which we took those steps, so we're good to go. And just like the other certificates, you're gonna to need to pass a written and practical exam. The privileges of an airline transport pilot certificate is that you can now fly for the airlines. All right, guys, in conclusion, we talked about the basic steps necessary of what you need to do to become a pilot. I will be breaking down these steps more in later videos. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please type them down below and I will be happy to answer all of them. Thank you guys for watching this video and tuning into the Prop Zone. If you're new here, please consider smashing that subscribe button and also hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Like I said, if you have any comments or questions, please go ahead and write those down below. And with that being said, you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thank you.